Welcome in everybody, James Phillips here for this edition of Bear Talk. Usually it's Brian Hale talking to the Bevel State players, but today we've got me and I've uh, got the uh, the old ball coach, right, Coach Suits? Old is right. <laughs> coach, I don't know. Well, and people probably don't know, uh, we, we go back a while. Yeah, we do. At least 20-something years now. For you, probably. it's a long while. For really? me, it's a little shorter <laughs> right. shorter period, yeah. yeah. But uh, I I got to cover you as a young sports writer when you were the uh, Dora head coach to, to yeah. start with, and that yeah. was always fun. Good experience. Yeah, we Good had experience. Some, there were some neat teams to watch then. Yes, they were. This, this, this area had, you know, no offense and not, you know, Things go in cycles, but right. it, basketball in this area was really good. Yeah, it during was. That era. They're in the uh, early, early 2000s. 2000s. There yeah. were a lot of good basketball, a lot of good teams. Right. Now, yeah. um, you've been Bell's coach for three, this is the third season? Third season. Um, just kind of talk about how the season's gone so far. I know you guys are uh, six and seven on the year, but uh, have, have played some pretty tough teams. Yeah, I, you know, our record is not good, but I think we're much improved over last year. We've played a lot tougher schedule. We've played seven ranked teams. We've only beaten two of them, which, but, you know, not many people have beaten them or they wouldn't be ranked. Right. And three other times we lost on the last shot of the game. Uh, to, to lose to ranked teams. So that's five times we've played basically even or, or beaten t people who are ranked. So right. we think we can compete with, you know, pretty much everybody on the schedule. And uh, we just got to develop some of our younger players so we have a little bit more depth and be a little more solid at a position or two. But uh, but overall, you know, we've got a, we got a really good point guard back in Javon Duncan. You know, we lost him last year, and that's when our season right. sort of went south on us. And then Nelson Haskin, our big post guy, is leading the state and rebounding and averaging a double double. So, when you got a post guy and a point to build around, you you got a good start. Right. Well, and talk about the differences between this year and last year. What's what's got the team? You know, what what makes them a little bit better than last year's team? Well, uh, better players is, is the main thing. I mean, last year, you know, we actually we were ten and one at Christmas, got right. to fourteen and two. But we lost <clears throat> four players last year, uh, two, two, two to grades and two to injuries, and they were all four point guards. Yeah. And we just couldn't piece together enough to, to fill in that, to go that deep at one position. And, and right. we just never had anybody else. The only kid we could do was give it to Wanya King, our scorer. Yeah. And then he became too easy to guard after he ended up starting having to handle the ball. It was too easy for him to find him and couldn't run him off as many screens and stuff. Well, in, in any level of basketball, but especially college basketball, if you don't have a point guard, you're yeah. going to have some tough days. Right. And then this year, we've got the, the best one we had back last year, back from injury, and then we picked up another good point guard. And then uh, uh, we've got a couple other guys, if we had, get in trouble, can play there. So we're a lot lot better off there. And our and our, and our inside game's a lot, we're a lot bigger and stronger inside, too. That's how, made a huge difference. How deep do y'all go as far as... Uh, Playing time goes. How many guys are you getting on the floor most of the time? We play seven a lot and three more, pretty good minutes. So we yeah. go about ten. That's but that's good for us. That's good. It's been six and seven my first two years. Yeah, well, the first two years you, there were a couple games where you only dressed out about six or seven. Yes, right? correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that can well, be difficult. Yeah, we we've just had a lot of bad luck on the injuries. You know, yeah. I mean, right now I think we would be. I think we could challenge for a championship. But our leading scorer returning, uh, Miguel Williams, broke his leg this summer. Right. And then when they were treating him in the hospital, they found out he had some condition that they had to go in and operate and put a plate in his good, what we thought was his good leg. And so yeah. he's missed the whole year. And like I say, he was our leading scorer that returned. Right. And then we had another one of our top recruits out of Bessemer. His mother has some physical uh, problems and had, started having seizures and he had to go home and take care of his mom. They wouldn't anybody to stay with her. Right. And he couldn't afford to have her have a seizure home by herself and nobody there to, you know, take care of her. Right. And then we had just one guy just quit, but he was he was, you know, six nine, about two thirty five. And you know, if we had those three I honestly think we could ch challenge for the championship. Yeah. Well even now you are like you said, you are competing against teams that are ranked and yeah. uh have picked up several big wins. Uh, go over just the the guys uh, that get significant playing time, uh, you can start with in the post and then talk about the guards. Okay. Well, uh, you know, Nelson is sort of what we started out building our team around, Haskin. Right. And Nelson's returning. And Nelson's just, you know, he's a great, great kid, great student, good person. 
And Nelson's it's what six seven? Six seven. Yeah. yeah but he's, he's probably got a wingspan for close to a seven foot. A little bigger. Yeah. And he, you know, like I say, he's he's shooting about sixty percent, averaging about twelve, a little over twelve, and eleven rebounds, and leading the conference in rebounding. So that's good. And then we picked up a boy named Anthony Brown, who's our our other starting post player. Ant's not, but about six five, but he goes about two thirty five. Right. And he's really athletic. Has a great touch on the ball. Well, somebody was, told me he was a quarterback in high school. 6'5", 235 pounds, three A quarterback. Right. Yeah. Nobody uh, was bringing him down. I, yeah, I bet you he was tough to sack. Yeah. yeah. But he was he was actually the three A offensive player of the year in the whole state in football. Okay. So yeah. he's a gifted child, and he's really helped us scoring wise in the post. And then we've got a freshman, uh, Martez Brown. Martez about six eight. He's taller than Nelson. He is as athletic as all get out. He's just he's just limited offensive skill wise but he's getting better every day and i can see him being a, a star by next year but he gives us good minutes he really plays right. good defense rebounds and then we've got you know Corey edwards back from last year and Corey's having a really good year this year so we're pretty solid with those four guys in the post right and then javon duncan is our point guard who who we were like i say 10 and 1 when he got hurt last year yeah and so he you know having him back has really helped now he's and we, not a huge scorer but he he, he averages, he averages up over a point a game. Right. Um, <laughs> For your point guards, that yeah. might be pretty good there. And then Walter Sharp, we picked up, uh, Walter Garfield, we picked up from, uh, he transferred back here from Delta State, but he played at Ramsey. And he's supposed to be our backup point guard, but he's played so well, we've been starting him some. Right. And he averages two points a game. So we're starting to pair of guards between them average three. Right, yeah. Three point. But they really both defend well. They, they get the ball to the right people and stuff. And then we picked up a guy late last spring named Latrell Tate, and Latrell has just blossomed into a star over now. He's averaging 27 points a game, right? And uh, leading the state, I guess. In, yeah, he is leading the state in scoring. But he defends well too. Yeah. He's a good ball handler. If we got in trouble, he can play the point. And uh, he he's made us a lot more explosive, and it allows us to play the two little guards who don't score much. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then we've got a kid named uh, Javante Rollins who. Javante's a little bit, I don't know, soft, not to write, but he just doesn't play aggressive enough. Right. And uh, he may be the most talented kid overall on the team. and But he plays a lot, plays every game. We've started him, I think, one game. But he is a he's an elite defender. He's 6'3", and he can guard little bitty guys, and he can guard big guys, and he can guard everybody in between. And then uh, Malik Betts is back from last year, and Malik got a lot of minutes last year. Right, and he's getting significant minutes too. So you well, know, in the game I was at, Malik had a good game yeah. against uh, Stillman's JV. I yeah. think he had a double double that night. Yeah, he 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 he's sort of inconsistent, but when he's on, he's on. Yeah, and then uh, after Christmas, uh, <clears throat> we'll get a boy named Grant Perry eligible, and Grant is an elite shooter. Okay, he played at Hazel Green with Kyra Lewis. Right, and he can really really shoot and. I think when we add him to our perimeter shooting and give us a little more punch on the perimeter, I, I honestly think we have a chance to, you know, finish high in the league. I think we, you know, I mean, I think conceivably we could win it, but, you know, I, I easily get to the top three or four this time, which would right. be good progress for us. Right. Well, and um, when I got to see the team a couple of weeks ago, the, the thing that kept sticking out to me is how much they did defend. Yeah. And that's yeah. always been something you preach. Yes, and, and like I say, last year we just couldn't get that group to guard well. If we'd have guarded well, we could have been pretty good. But, you know, we've worked really hard this year and maybe been a little more demanding of them. And our defense is, is fine. We're still struggling to rebound as well as we need to. We're, right. We're, what, what happens when you get guys like Anthony Brown, Ant averaged 17 rebounds a game for his career. Right. For his career. Four-year starter. 17 rebounds a game for four years. That's a lot of rebounds. That's a lot of rebounds. But and he's then, playing 3A ball too, though. Yeah. And then Nelson is just so athletic and can outjump everybody. And then Martez, same way at 6'8". Those long. They just, they don't, they've never blocked out a lot before. And right. they're really struggling. If we can get them to add a little block out to their athleticism and we get a little stronger on the boards, then our defense will be even better. Cause, yeah, because it's know. a little different once you're competing every night against guys your size. Yeah, guess, you know. yeah. No, like when we go to Hansville, they'll have three guys taller than every one of those guys. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, well, let's take a break real quick. We need to go and hear from Bevel State Community College since that's who we're here talking about. 
Good, we'll, good folks. Right. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back to talk a little bit about the game coming up on Monday night. Your story starts at Bevel State Community College. Whether you are just starting out or starting over, Bevel State has an opportunity that is right for you. With five locations serving seven counties, you don't have to go far to start your own success story. Plus, with tuition lower than four-year colleges, you won't need to spend more for a great education. Visit us online at bscc.edu to learn about your options for seamless academic transfer and high-demand career tech and health science offerings. Let us help you tell your story. All right, we're back. Uh, James Phillips here talking to Coach Tommy Suits. Coach Suits, uh, let's talk about what's ahead. I know you, you've only got, what, a couple more games this year. One more till the first until the conference starts. Okay, so Monday night's it. Monday so night's it. If anybody locally wants to come see the Bears, they need to get out there uh, this Monday. And y'all have had bigger crowds, it seems. Uh, uh, a little bit, right? yeah, we have. We just hadn't had many games, but uh, you know, it should be a good game too. We're playing Enterprise, right? And we've played them every year I've been here, and they managed to beat us six one time the first year. We beat them five one time last year and the five games of all so they've been anywhere from overtime to a six point margin so every game we play has gone right down to the wire right and y'all played once already this year yep and we beat them we blew them out by two on the road on the road beat, yeah. them, beat them two yeah, yeah. so that, and that's what, every time we play that's what it does it, it always goes right down to the end very good games good competitive games you know two teams who have a lot of respect for each other and you know kids get along well we sort of know them because we play them every year you know they got right. to know each other personally so it should be a, it should be a fun game you know because we're team pretty evenly matched size and talent wise and all so I think they'll be the same way I think they feel like they can I think they feel like they can crack the top three four in the south so. right well and that's what once once this game's over then you start looking at conference play yeah. and it doesn't get any easier starting in conference no because we start with water state and uh, Shelton, who who over the last ten years have been the two best teams in the state, so we we get jump in the fire pretty quick. What's your take on the North? Who who's the top? If y'all if you guys make it crack the top four, who else is up there with you? Shelton will be around at the end. They they've they've not been as consistent this year. Right. Lawson is way better. I wouldn't be surprised to see them get up there. Hansville's talented enough to do it. Um, Southern Union's got the best team they've had. I mean. Pretty much everybody. Everybody's got I mean, the, uh, when the first poll came out, we were picked 14 out of 16 in the whole state. Right. And last in the north. So, right. Uh, then they, we played the scrimmage games, and they had another poll, and we went up to 11 and I think 6th or 7th in the north. So, But we, I don't much worry about those. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you got to take care of your team. The two most meaningless stats in sports are polls, results, and halftime scores. Right, that's true. <laughs> you know, and we and that's what we tell our kids every game. The most meaningless stat in sports is I score at halftime. Yeah. So, you know, just go back out there like it's nothing, nothing and play. Well, um, how difficult has it been to resurrect a program three years into it? Well, <clears throat> it, it's been more difficult than I thought. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't. I'm here, and I'm proud of our program, and I wouldn't be here. Right. But realistically, you know, uh, to me, to a lot of people in Jasper, uh, that gym is something special. Right. To a 17-year-old coming there and seeing it, it's like, what? I played in a better gym than this in high school. Right. And, you know, and you have to explain the history and hope that they'll buy in, you know. And, you know, we only have two dressing rooms. So you can't host a tournament, you know. So the gym has to be overcome. Right. You know, and... Uh, we have certain percentage of our players have to be recruited in the local area. <clears throat> and like you're saying, when I was at Dora in the early 20s, right. you could have fielded a team right. off of our team and Holt and Winfield and Corner and, you know, some other teams around here. We had some of the best teams in the state uh, in our in Minor, just down the road, yeah. you know. And now they're just, you know, we've got some good teams. I saw Oakman the other night. I think they may have a really good year this year. And uh, but they just aren't that level of team, you know. Right. Carbon Hill hadn't got back to the level where they were when Coach Epps was out there with Gerald Smith and Tyler Owens and stuff like that. And you know, and it's just a cyclical, cyclical thing. Where, and we're just rotating through a cycle where there just aren't that many local players. 
Right. And that's hurt us a little bit. And then we just seem to keep getting guys hurt. Right. Yeah, you know, you've had a lot of issues with that every the year. The first year, our starting five missed 93 games. We only played a hundred, you know, if you, if you count five positions times 28 games, that's only 140 right. individual games. And our starters missed 93 of the 40. Right. 140. So that's, that's way, way, way over half. You know, and then last year we lost only four guys, but they were, everyone played the same position. And then this year we've had the misfortune of uh, our lead returning scorer getting hurt and our probably our best recruit yeah. having to go home and take care of his mama. And so a lot of it's just, you know, look. But that all goes together when you're not as deep, when you're recruiting out of a local area that's got – they're good kids, and some of them are good players. They're just not guys you can put out there and play 30 minutes a night. Right. Yeah. And but when you get the better players hurt, those guys have to play a bigger role, and sometimes they just can't quite get it done. But uh, but like I say, I think we'll make enough progress this year that, and we're we're in good shape recruiting. I think next year might be you know we right. might be established enough to be at the top, stay at the top. Well, and it's tough playing against those teams like Shelton and Wallace. You know, yeah. uh, every year they've had athletes and they've got well. Yeah, and, and I think in our society, too, uh, social media right. and, you know, different things, uh, I think I think if you're not careful, the rich keep getting richer. Right. And, you know, because look at college football. Yeah. I mean, there there are used to, they'd be 10 or 12 teams start of the year that you think they might win a championship. Now you look now, at there might be five. You, yeah. You know, right now, this year there's three. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't think Oklahoma has a chance, you know, and so... It's sort of getting that way, filtering all the way, you know, and, and in basketball, you know. I mean, Kentucky's had a bump in a row this year, losing to Stephen F. Austin, and Duke's lost a game and different things. But in the end, you could sit down right now and pick five, six teams and almost be assured you'd have the national champ in that group. Yeah. And that, you know, it's just, and, 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 and even all the way down to the junior college level, it's sort of getting that way. And so we just got to get ourselves up in that small group. Yeah. And yeah. that's, you know, it's taking a little longer than I'd hoped it would. But, you know, and... You know, excuses are excuses. You know, I mean, you, know, you got to play with who you got. Those guys got hurt, but that's part of it. Right. Nobody's yeah. fault. It just just happened. Yeah. So, but we, like I said, we're pretty optimistic about it. And and I've got good help. You know, Kelly Cheatham was a very successful two-time state champion winner at uh, Ramsey. Went to six Final Fours. He's a proven coach. And then we've got a young guy named Blake Franks who's helping us. And Blake's been involved in basketball his whole life. Runs his own AAU program, and he has contacts with just a multitude of kids through that AAU program. Right. And uh, been great with the kids. He's younger and sort of balances Kelly and I out with his youth right. and enthusiasm. And, and so I, I think we've got it in pretty good shape if we can just, you know, make the progress we're hoping for this year. Well, and you mentioned the social media and stuff, too, that the kids look to. And hopefully things like this that we do is a is a help. You know, oh, there's, not, there's not many places that'll have their own little talk show or, no, or you're broadcast the games and stuff. You're exactly right. Yeah, and and like you said, we have our attendance is not what it used to be in the old days. You know, but right. but it's still we're we're our attendance is way better than a lot. You know, we're probably in the top four, right. maybe top three in the north in yeah. attendance, and there's probably a half a dozen schools in the south that we draw. So we're, we're easily into the top half, if not the top third, in the whole state in attendance. Yeah, because I know y'all could travel to some games and it'd be a ghost town. In the, in the oh, yeah, there are places you go, they, they won't have 50, 60 people at a game. Right. Well, yeah, so. Um, I'm glad the community's supporting it, and I think it just takes a little time for it to grow and, and, and win and helps everything, too. Well, it does. A lot more people show up when the wins are, that, that, are going that, high. That's right. And, and, you know, and this year, you know, we've only had, I think, uh, this will be our fourth home game. We've right. only had three home games. Yeah. And then when you look at our record also, that you know we've had three home games. And so that means 10 on the road. Right, yeah. Seven of them against ranked teams. Yeah. You know, and, and as a college coach, we you know we normally say if you can win your home games and half of your games on the road, you'll have had a great year. Well, we've only had three home games to try to win. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, I, I, we're about, you know, I felt like anything around 500 would be acceptable. Going yeah, into Christmas. Going into Christmas, yeah. Because of the, the caliber of the teams we've played. Right. And like I say, the last three, Selma beat us. Selma's an honorable mention in the national rankings. They should be ranked. Yeah. They've got Shelton ranked 14th, and Selma's beat them both times and got a better record. So go figure. Well, you can't trust any sort of uh, sports writer. Yeah, but that, 
True. Yeah, <laughs> our newspaper writers right. who are export writers. Right. You yeah. can't trust any of those. But that, but you know, Selma beat us on the last shot of the game. Uh, Monday and Saturday the same week. So we're one shot from beating a ranked team twice in the right. same week. Yeah. Northeast, uh, Eastern Florida, who was ranked, been ranked as high as fifth in the nation, uh, we had it down to a one possession game, fouled them three times in a row. They made both free throws all three times. We came down, scored you. Finally, they missed one, but there wasn't but two seconds left. Right. So yeah. we're within one play of having beaten three ranked teams in a row, and everybody think we're really good. So yeah. okay. we're, we're just, you know, we're right there. We just got to keep our heads up and get into conference and take care of business. Well, Coach, thanks for joining us today. Um, hopefully next week Brian will be back and he'll have some some players on here, so it'll be a lot more entertaining than, than us two old guys sitting around talking about basketball. I guarantee everybody listening to agree with that. <laughs> they may not agree with anything we've said today, but, but, but Brian and those players were much better than me and you. Right. Yep. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you for next week's Bear Talk. Be sure to go out Monday night. Uh, Tip-off is at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Tip off 7 o'clock. Go out and support the Bears. They need your help. This will uh, get their record at 500 for Christmas. And then after Christmas, no telling what happens once they get into conference play. So we'll see you guys right after Christmas break. <laughs>